Hello. Well, in the olden days, when a piece of my equipment broke down, I used to get a bit upset about it. But these days, I think of it as more of an opportunity to share a pair with you on YouTube. So today we're looking at a Sony VO 9850P. This is a Umatic video recorder, and it's one I particularly like, actually. It's got some great features. So as well as being able to take low band tapes, this one can take high band and also SP because in the UK, on PAL format, there are actually three variants of the Umatic format. A feature I particularly like about this one is that it has a uh, RF signal strength meter. So if you have a tape such as the one I'm playing here, where the tracking is offset, you can uh, peak the uh, tracking control to get the maximum RF output. And it can also be useful if you're looking at tape that's giving terrible results and you see this uh, meter really very low at the bottom, you know that you're looking at a condition of either a very bad tape or maybe it's fouled the heads. So it's a very useful feature that and uh, not something that's on the VO9800 machine, which I also have one of. So you'd say, well, this machine's working beautifully. Why am I worrying about it? Well, it has two faults. One is that uh, rewind is a bit slow and sometimes it'll give up altogether on longer tapes and it'll give you this error message. Now, something I should mention about this is that uh, if it hits this error message during rewind or fast forward, you can press the eject button and eject the tape. But if it gives you this error message when it's playing a tape, then you can't. You have to switch machine off and on again before you can eject the tape. And unfortunately, that brings us to the other fault on this machine. The power switch is broken. It's stuck on. Now, this may be partly my fault because this machine, when I first bought it, had a faulty power switch. It didn't work at all. And I replaced the power switch with one from a scrap machine. I don't remember which. This was going back a long time. Uh, oh, something like 15 years ago. Now, uh, maybe I fixed it, fitted a switch that wasn't rated uh, high with a high enough current capability of this machine. I doubt that. It's more likely it was just a fault. Uh, anyhow, so I need to replace the power switch. Some time ago, you might have seen that I had to raid a switch out of a uh, Betacam SP player, BVW22P, because that machine's faulty anyway, so uh, I thought it was a fair target for raiding a switch. Well, maybe that can give me a power switch for this uh, Umatic as well. So uh, let's get this Umatic into the bench and uh, see what the problem is. I have this particular player connected to a time-based corrector and it's one that's specially designed for Umatic use and has the dub input connectors so it's able to handle the uh, chrominance and uh, luminance signal separately which uh, most uh, machines can't do with Umatic because they don't have an S-video connector in the normal way of say a Super VHS video or a Hi8 video recorder would. So uh, I have to Remove all the connectors for that, and I should mention that even though there's a dub connector, you'd have thought that handles everything, actually to get the colour to work properly, you need to connect both the dub and the composite video output uh, from the back of the Umatic. Right, so here it is on our bench. This is a machine that it was failing to rewind earlier. Actually, <laughs> this isn't a videotape at all. This is a, an audio recording uh, using PCM Digital Audio. I have worked on that before. But uh, we can use that just to demonstrate the, uh, the problem with the rewind and uh, find out if the problem is. The two most likely causes are the idler belt or the idler tire. So uh, we'll have a look at those. So here's our slow rewind, which often stops with an error message. So we'll. Uh, put it out of its misery. So what I want to do is have a look underneath and see if the belt is slipping. If the belt is rotating fine, then it's going to be the idler tire on the top. So I've removed two screws here and one in the middle there. And I believe, yes, it just hinges down nicely. And the real idle belt is this one. So let's see if that's slipping and causing this pulley to go slow, or if the pulley's going fast and then it's going to be a problem at the top. I might change both anyway, but let's see how we go. 
select rewind. It's actually going quite quickly now. Seems to like being on its side. So that was a bit, um, I'm trying fast forward. It's working nicely now on its side. Okay, but this belt feels a bit slack. So I think we'll change that anyway, and then we'll see where we are. Let's see if we can find a belt of the same sort of size. You have one here that looks promising. Uh, some of the drive belts I have in my new old stock collection uh, are starting to rot, so uh, I've got a bit of black gunge everywhere. Belts do that. But this belt seems to be in good condition, so uh, let's try that. We'll try that. This one, the old belt, seemed to be bouncing around a lot, whereas this one looks a lot, uh, lot of better condition. Try rewind. Fast forward. Okay, that's fine. Let's turn the machine back onto its base and see where we are. Okay, let's try it the uh, right way around. Actually, seems to be it, doesn't it? It's worth waiting to rewind all the way to the very end of the tape because that's when there's most load on the rewind idler. That noise is quite common on Umatic. Okay, also a thing to bear in mind with Umatic, the tape starts at this end and goes that way. So it's the opposite way around to most formats. Right, that seems to be working fine. So we just need to go into battle with this uh, power switch problem. Right, the power switch is there, so uh, I'll um, give you a better view from looking down on it. And I think what we'll do is take the cassette carriage out so we can have good access. I'm going to take this front panel off too. Right, there's the power switch. Here's the cassette carriage. So I think we'll uh, eject the tape. You undo these screws on the other end of this bar and the carriage comes out quite easily. Plug the connector at the back of the carriage here. This connector and the whole cassette carriage comes off. And you'll have seen me do this uh, sort of thing on uh, another video where I uh, repair some pneumatic video recorders. This is the idler tyre that I may have had to change, but it seems to be in good condition and that's not causing my problem with the rewind. So uh, let's have a look at this power switch. Taking the front panel off unfortunately involves removing the side panels if they've been installed. They're often not there anyway if the machine's been involved in a, a rack mount. Once the side is off, you can uh, undo the lower screw for the front panel which will then come off. You do need to take the knobs off the front as well. Right, I should be able to take the front off. Now I can get to the screws that hold the power switch on. Uh, these are these oddball screws that I came across the other day when I was working on an old Betamax machine. That They're slotted, but they have a centre pin. So it's not that they're JIS uh, type Japanese screws. They're just a very strange slotted screw. Ah, you can see the markings I'd left on here from many years ago when I last changed the switch. Yellow and brown it says there. Blue and white there. This switch doesn't appear to be something I can dismantle to repair. Oh, now it's starting to work. What do you make of that? Still think I should change it though. Here's the BVW22P, just taking the lid off, which we're going to borrow a power switch from. 
This is one I'd raided a, another switch from some time ago uh, for a different machine. I think it was a Hi8 actually. So um, let's see how hard it is to take this apart. And it has the same slightly strange wiring that it got brown, not opposite blue, but you'd expect it to be brown and blue there, but no, it's not. It's brown and blue at the other side. So, uh, same colour coding. We need to swap this out for that one. Okay, the switch is uh, wired up. I'll put this sleeve over and then I'll test it and if that's all good, we'll reassemble it. Right, that's the off position, good. Try the on position. Okay, I think it's a bit confused because the carriage is not plugged in and there's a lot of light on it. So we'll um, reassemble it and uh, see if it's all happy. Right, there's the switch uh, refitted. Let's uh, do the cassette carriage. Okay, um, power it up again. Oh good, it's probably unlaced now. Put tape in. Fast forward. Good. Rewind. As I mentioned, that noise is quite common. Now, it looks like I may have missed a screw out at some point in the past because it appears there should be a screw there under the Dolby switch. If you fit all these switches in the down position, then these sliding covers will fit over them. Okay, that's all reassembled. You have to sort of jiggle these um, VU meters in. Um, and I need to remember, of course, to set all these back to my normal positions. And uh, now I'll refit the side panels and top. Okay, that's the machine fully repaired. Except it does have a quirk, this machine. Sometimes when I press fast forward, the light doesn't come on. And I press it a few more times and it will variously go on and off. Not quite sure what that's about. That might be... Um, bad connection but I, yeah I think it's a bad connection in the front panel I wonder if I could fix that um, I'm not sure how easy it is to get this apart but let's have a look looking at it I may not need to take it apart I think I can get to the PCB quite well from here so let's have a close look at the uh, wiring for the fast forward LED. Everything's marked up beautifully here. I'll take this plastic cover off and let's see if we can look at the soldering underneath. I think you can see there if we bring that into focus. That's the soldering on the LED itself. It's a fairly classic dry joint. So we'll uh, re-solder that and it should fix it. And I always like to uh, clean up any flux on the PCB. And let's refit the uh, clear plastic sheet. Okay, let's test that. Yeah, that's fixed. Okay, so all I need to do now is refit this machine back into my studio. And you might think that's the end of it, but not quite, because the uh, BVW22P beta cam machine, I'm going to fit the power switch back in that so that at least it's in a testable condition. If ever I want to uh, borrow some more parts from it, I need to get, get some idea of what it does or doesn't do. So even though it's a scrap machine, I'm still going to keep it as complete as possible. Now, normally at this point, I say don't forget to like, share, and especially subscribe. But from here on in, I'm going to change that 
because I think you can make your own decisions about whether you're going to subscribe or not. Uh, the channel now is big enough. I think we've got over 4.5k uh, subscribers now. We're starting to get somewhere. So I'll just say, hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now. <laughs>